Hello and welcome all to this session of Healing Yoga. Just waiting a couple minutes for people to join here. And as I stand here or sit here, so either one is an option, it's going to Breathe in through the nose, drawing in all that fresh oxygen, sending that to all the cells in the body, fully exhaling out any of the carbon dioxide, stagnant energy, worry, tension, anything that is no longer serving. So think of these analogies or actualities as we're breathing in through the nose, drawing it in, that oxygen, and exhaling out carbon dioxide. And think about the plants, our house plants or the plants outdoors, how they breathe in the carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. It's a wonderful little microcosm that we live in, the exchange. Hello and welcome. Mara, hi, thanks for joining today. We're just beginning in a seated or standing position, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just really focusing on our breath right now. No judgment or expectations. Just drawing in that deep breath and expanding out through the chest and the lungs as well as the belly and the rib cage. And then fully exhaling that out. Continue with that breath. Again, always the option to have the chair. I'm going to begin standing today, but please feel free to be seated in a chair always. You can also be seated on a mat if um, that feels better for you too. So today I will be doing a practice um, mostly on the mat, but I will certainly show modifications on the chair. And if there is something that is not working out with a modification, you can make your own modification or um, send a message through our page and ask about some other modifications and if we can go there. But also know that not everything is for everybody. And that's, that's about getting to know your own body and doing what you can and honoring your own own self. Like one of the tenets of yoga, first one, ahimsa, to do no harm. So we always want to have respect for ourselves and others. As we continue breathing in through the nose and out the mouth, thinking about our wake up that we practice every other Thursday when we practice with me. So we've got that breath flowing in through the nose and out the mouth, taking the pads of our fingers or the notched fingers and thumb, find your collarbones and move down and out about an inch. This is the end point of the kidney meridian and it also turns on the entire meridian system. Hello and welcome. We're just beginning the wake up. Your breath is in the nose and out the mouth. Getting the energy moving forward, one of the directions energy wants and needs to move. Shake that off. Come to your sternum, the cap thumb for massage, thymus, bringing in those T cells. Really a helpful thing to do, particularly at this time of year. Breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Shake it off. Side seams just beneath the bra line 
if you're wearing a bra or just right at the rib cage, um, wipe right beneath the breasts, spleen points, digestion, and metabolizing of our food and our thoughts, things that come in and out of our realm. We're breathing in through the nose, out the mouth. Remember, if any of these points are ever sore, if you have no underlying issue that you're aware of, then you just rub them a little bit more. Rub it with uh, enough firmness so you feel it, but not enough to make a bruise. And then we're shaking that out, finding our cheekbones. Tapping, thumping, or massaging. You can stay at the cheekbone or go all the way around the eye, the orbital bone. Grounding, associated with the earth element. The in-between seasons, the solstices and the equinoxes. Shake that off. Stand with your breath for two to three nice breaths, integrating the four thumbs. If you hear my breath, which I hope you do sometimes, that's always a reminder for you to focus most on the breath. The breath can give us a lot of information about ourselves and how we're feeling, what emotion we may be having at any given time. So we'll begin our cross crawl here with that same sided or homolateral march. Pause the energy and cross it over. Remember when we get very tired or run down, our energy will automatically go to that two-sided or homolateral state to conserve the body's energy. So we need to uh, manipulate it just like we're doing right now to draw it over. This can be done standing, seated, or lying down and you don't even have to lift the knee. You're lying down you can just cross over you can slice from one shoulder to the opposite hip and breathe focus your intentions so you always start with that same side that stuff and you do two or three times as many of the crossover pattern as you do the same side one just something to remember so that's the cross crawl. And then we finish with the uh, zip up and the hook up. So this is the zip up. Hover your hands over the pubic bone. This is to seal in our energy and protect our own energy field from others. <clears throat> from sometimes that um, kind of negative energy that floats around out and about. So let's zip up the midline, seal it in, and then sweep our arms out to clear our own aura. Again, zip up and sweep out. And the last one, we're doing the hook up, press in the belly button and between the brows, using the middle finger, in, setting our energetic spine. And this is one of the number one way one of the best ways we can clear our own aura, our energy field, if you will. Our energy field is comprised of different fields, emotion, mentally, emotional, mental, spiritual, etc. as we move in. Most disease starts out in this Feel this invisible field that most don't see. Um, some of us can feel it. Um, if, if you just quiet yourself sometimes, you can feel the subtlety of the energy out there. But again, most of the dis-ease starts out here. So clearing it before it comes in and manifests in the physical is a good way to just what I call clean the house. So that's where the weaving comes in, the figure eights. In my studies, we um, 
experienced a lot of different techniques from Donna Eden, who is the author of Energy Medicine, and so many great techniques in that book. But uh, the weaving, Donna says that our outermost weave or our outermost layer of energy is called the Celtic weave. And it is made up of figure eights, um, swirlies, uh, lots of geometric patterns, but mostly figure eights. And the more figure eights we have in our field, the healthier we are. And we can always create more figure eights by just weaving the hands large or small, the larger goes out in our field, the smaller figure eights that we create focus more on the brain and the eyes. So there's just a little brief tutorial for you. Um, I like to weave a lot. I've gotten in the habit of doing this a lot and it clears the air. So let's stand up or sit whichever you like, and cross one leg over the other. Now, if this is a little challenging um, due to balance issues, you can have a chair here, and you can even have a seat on the chair to do this and cross just the ankles. So we'll stand, crossing the ankles, and if the feet are kind of out, Charlie Chaplin, got to be of a certain age to remember that, then you should have a, a fairly strong foundation or base here. And then we're just going to cross the hands, curl them under. If that's too awkward, just cross the forearms and bring the hands together. We'll take three to five breaths. There's always the option to draw the arms up and back down as you breathe, giving yourselves a little upper back stretch. This helps us to get clearer in our thinking, unscramble energies. And then let's switch the cross of the arms, whatever way we had it before. Just switch that cross and then switch the cross of the ankles. Same thing in the chair. So we draw the arms up and down. And remember, you don't have to have this twisting cross. You can just have it crossed over like so. Many times I give out lots of little tidbits of information. So just remember, you have this recorded to reference at any time. Go back if you have questions or you want to repeat something. These are always there for you. Let's take one more deep breath. Shake it out. And if we're doing, we're going to go into kind of a moving balance from side to side. Now you can lift a foot up or just keep that toe down. Just moving and get about building a little bit of strength, endurance, and flexibility. So it could be here. You might lift the leg up here. If you have a chair handy, just have that right to your side or in front of you, kind of making do with that. So I'll move to the side and I'm just demos demonstrating some things in case if you lose your balance, you can place a hand down on the chair. So we'll go side to side. You can just go with momentum Maybe soften the knees down. Breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, or in through the nose and out through the mouth, finding your natural breath. Perhaps practicing that S, that S exhale as you 
Exhale, hit him out through the teeth. It's kind of a release. Releasing any grief or sadness that you may be experiencing at this time. Grief and sadness are associated with the challenging emotions of autumn and the element of metal. The time we're in right now. The balancing emotions are of letting go. Thinking of how beautiful the leaves are on the trees at this time of year, but they don't continue to cling to their branches. They know it's time to let go, to be released into the ground, into the soil, to be composted and reproduced through the winters and the spring to rise up again and be reborn. So if you think of it that way, just the cycle and flow of life, breathe it in and exhale it out. Release. Let's bend the knees. Sit back in your chair a little bit or even just sit in your chair we're going into heaven connecting earth. So that's bringing hands to heart center and then reaching palm up toward the heavenlies, the other toward the earth. Breathing and moving. Releasing any stuck energies within the body, creating space for fresh energies to flow. Breathing all the while. Maybe another out breath is resonating with you more. I suggest experimenting. One more to the other side. And then big hands to heart that center. Sit back in your chair. Reach up to that long, strong dart. Draw the belly button in and up like a little hook. <clears throat> and we're going to come into a gentle back bend. Soften shoulders back and down. Ground firmly through the heels and the balls of the feet. And then begin to weave the arms forward into forward fold. Nod the head a couple times here, shake it side to side. Come into half lift as you draw your shoulders back. Exhale. Slowly weave the arms up. Breathing. In this next posture, we will use this breath on the exhale, just inhaling through the nose regularly, exhaling out with that sound. So stepping the feet <clears throat> no wider than hip width apart, or even just seated here. We're going to start with the hands, the palms open as we come into a gentle back bend. Inhale, exhale. We're slowly sweeping, sweeping fingertips to that incomplete circle. Inhale once again, bring the arms up a little higher, about chest high. And 
Last time, open up as wide as feels good for you. Lift heart center. Draw belly button in and up. This time, cross one hand over the other. Slide on top of the arms and cross at the wrists. Resting hands either side, just inside the shoulder and the chest. Two more breaths. And then just work in between the breasts here. These are some lung neurolymphatic points. They may be a little sore, but we're just getting the lymph to move. As our lymph does not have its own pump, it needs to be manipulated through exercise or through what we're doing right now. Moves this into our venous supply for elimination. Flick off the fingers. Remember that stimulates meridians that begin or end on the fingertips as well as the toes. Not as easy to flick our toes, but you get the idea. <clears throat> Let's go into a, a lateral flexion here. Reach over one side. And remember, you can have the feet wider apart. This can be done seated and go to the other side. So as we inhale up, turn that palm up, that out breath can be anything that feels right for you. Remember the sounds. And the ujjayi breath, it's the inward breath, in the nose and out the nose. One more time. Now standing with the hips forward, we're going into a standing twist. Now we can be on the chair and do a twist. We could cross a leg over and give you a little deeper twist here. The same with standing option to cross a leg over. And arms can be out if that feels good. You can have them at goal post or just wrap one around to that lower hip and bring the opposite arm back. And then unwind and Open to that side, that twist. Breathe. Come back to center. Shake out the legs a little and then cross the opposite leg over. However it feels good to go into that twist, make sure you draw that belly button in and up, protecting the low back. Breathe. And only going as far as feels good for your body. Unwind to open. center, shaking that out. Now, if you have a strap or a tie, anything will work. It's strong enough to pull it. I'm going to go into some chest expansion. This 
So I like to hold this kind of with the palms facing each other. And if you don't have a strap, that's okay. You can just um, squeeze the arms back and draw the hands toward each other. So you're dropping the shoulders down, placing your shoulder blades or your scapula in your back pockets, and then squeezing the arms back. So with the strap, this just gives you a little bit more stability. Softening your knees, think about your head, neck, and spine in alignment here. And we're hinging forward, dropping the crown, maybe lifting the arms up just to where you can. And with a strap or without, you can take your arms wider, doing what feels good. And then come forward, stand tall into a hard opening back bend. Come back to center. Take a couple breaths. And we want to do this slowly because once we're overhead, our head's lower than our heart, we can get dizzy as we come back up. So we want to be mindful of that and go slowly. One more time, let's soften the knees. Knees just track over the ankles, not past toes. Hinge. Draw arms up. Head, neck, spine alignment here. Breathe. down, slowly come to stand, lift, gentle back bend, keeping that belly drawn in and up. We're going to just set this strap to the side for now and go into what's called the penetrating flow. This is uh, good for balancing our hormones, especially um, if you're male. So we're going to soften the knees. And we're going to bring one hand on top of the other. This place called the Ming Men Point. Just know where the belly button is. And right directly behind it on the back side is that Ming Man Point. You're sure to be holding it. Points are small. So we're circling our wrists or our hands flat on the back. And then the other direction. Now if this is bothersome to have the knees bent, and stand taller and then we'll sweep our hands around remember our hands have electromagnetic properties front and back back of the hands and palms one more time back and then we're going to slide up seal up the energies cup over the mouth three audible breaths. Deep inhale. One more full exhale. Shake off the hands. And now let's grab our strap or whatever we have. Once again, back scratch test. This kind of gives us an idea of where our flexibility with our arms and shoulders goes. Don't overdo if you have shoulder issues. Just find what works, but don't go past your edge ever. So I like to bring one strap up and walk the other hand up. You may be able to touch fingers or even hook the fingers on one side or both sides or neither. That's what we're working on right now is increasing our flexibility. So my elbow kind of comes in front here. I'm going to bring it back so I get this opening stretch through the pectoral where the shoulder girdle and the chest come together. I'm standing tall, lifting through the crown of the head. Breathe. So on this side, 
I'm unable to touch, but that's okay. I'm getting a nice stretch right here. Breathing. Another deep breath. Slowly release and shake out. And then we do a side two. And if you are able to touch on either side and would rather not use the strap, that's completely fine. This is a great opening stretch. So if you notice, you have one side rotating externally and one side rotating internally. So we do it both, both of them on either side, just simply by switching sides. Deep breaths here. Draw that elbow back. And one more deep breath. Slowly release, roll the shoulders. Just take your gaze both directions. And bring your gaze forward and just place your strap to the side for now. Drop the chin to the chest, shoulders back and down. Let's roll along the collarbones, looking out to the side. Dropping the chin, rolling along the collarbones, the other side. And then come down. One more time, drop it down, and then return to center. So next, we're going to go into either a childlike pose, like child's pose, or a modified downward facing dog using the chair, or certainly on a mat. So on the chair, you can hold here the hands down, the forearms can be down more like a dolphin pose and just let the head hang. Or we can be on the mat, splay the fingers and feet about hip width apart. Breathe, finding that length in your spine, lifting out through the tailbone and pedaling the feet. Lifting the heels, finding that contact with the balls of the feet into the earth. Nod the head, shake it side to side. Lift the feet once again. Begin to walk or just slide the hands into your forward fold, softening knees as necessary. And then from here, we bend down into a little bit of a squat or be on the chair doing what we can for today. If this is not in your toolbox at all. You can always lie on your back side and draw the knees into the chest for your passive squat pose. Squat pose is so beneficial. So any way you do it, you're going to get some benefit. You just have to do it. So I slowly came back up from my downward facing dog. Once again, let's sweep up, reach for a wrist, and stretch to one side, soft knees as we circle around, forward, and up to the other side, switch wrists, reach, soft knees, circle forward, 
and switch wrists once again. Soft knees. Circle around. Switch. Center, switch, side, center, one more to each side, switch, side bend, breathing all the while. And come back to center and now we'll come either to hands and knees or once again maybe forearms to your chair whatever feels right or just seated because we're going to start with a cat cow so either seated in our chair skipping up to the belly dropping chin inhale into that gentle back bend or from hands and knees, stack joints, knees beneath hips, and wrists beneath shoulders. Working not to put too much weight into the wrists. You wanna really draw in through the abdominals or make them fire and work through this. Breathing, perhaps exhaling on this cat Inhale on that back bend. And you could go into your wag side to side. All planes of the body involved. A couple more rounds here. Should feel good on your whole body, actually, particularly the midsection. Up some glutes. And now we'll come in to relative stillness, moving in to spinal balance. I come to the side, because I'm running into a piece of furniture. So from our mat, of course, slide one leg back. Flex the foot as you lift no higher than hip high. Active energy in that leg and draw the belly button in and up. Opposite arm reaches. We're breathing. Good release pose. And release back down. Now, if you have a chair here, can be here to the side, maybe the forearm down or the forearm and reaching with the opposite arm. Now we're switch sides if we're on the mat. We're holding and we're breathing. And move and Breathe as you feel guided. One more to each side. And then take the knees a little wider. Maybe come into puppy pose. If you have some knee issues. Or back a little further. We're going into being with head heels. So we just take our hands, rub them briskly together. And then we're just going to cover our eyes, place the elbows down, find that doable position. You can also do this on the chair, elbows on the knees, face cradled with the hands. So by covering our eyes, this takes away a lot of tension out of the body. About 80% of tension comes in through the eyes. 
So we're taking that out of the equation. Goes a long way for reducing tension in our bodies. Breathe it out. Draw breath in. As you feel complete, just release the hands. Maybe take the knees wide. Create a diamond shape with your fingers. The elbows come out wide. And then we just rest with our nose in the middle of that diamond shape. Forehead resting on the fingers so we aren't smushing our nose. This is triple downward facing diamond. And from a chair, just have the knees wide, have the elbows, and you're just gonna be floating in space here, resting. This helps to release grief and sadness. Protecting our hearts protecting our personal space. Slowly coming around, bringing the legs forward or just seated on the chair. Uh, we'll do some large intestine points as uh, the lungs and large intestines in Chinese medicine are the organs that are related to the season of autumn and the element of metal. So our large intestine neural lymphatics are the place where we can kind of manipulate and move the lymph, located on the outside, basically on the outside seam if you have pants on that have a seam right in there, but just right in there. So if you have a tendency toward constipation, you would move from the hip joint down to just above the knee. If you have the opposite issue, you have loose stools, you would move from just above the knee up to the outside and also the inside. These are small intestine here, but I usually work both. So you would just work from the knee up to the leg pit and that hip joint or down from the leg pit down to above the knee. You have constipation issues. Just think down, release, up, retain. And then if you have no issues at all, it doesn't matter which one you, you do, but three to four passes and they don't always feel good. You're always probably gonna feel this. So you can use the tips of the fingers or I just use between the knuckle and the first joint bend. Press in and move my way down, breathing. It is a thing and it works. It's effective. It doesn't happen immediately. Much sooner than we would expect. Shake it off. Flick it off. This helps move energy as well. Shaking off the hands. We do a lot of that in energy medicine yoga. 
Breathing in here, we're gonna make our way onto the floor. So if you, if you were seated, you can certainly do that same thing. If you're seated, you're just gonna cross one ankle over the opposite knee, like so, in the chair. And on your backside, you're gonna cross that ankle over. Now if you have a strap or sash or something that will come in kind of handy here, <laughs> use the strength of that bottom leg <coughs> to bring it in. Foot is flexed to help protect the ankle and knee. And then you can bring strap around even behind the thigh or around the shin. That feels right for you. Threading that through. Different ways of doing this. You can take it behind the calf and draw it in, but we never place ankle on the knee joint or the strap on the knee joint. So this is figure four stretch or um, eye of the needle. You don't have to have the leg extended. You can just be here. It's also kind of the supine pigeon pose or a modification for pigeon. Feeling a nice stretch in through our glute area. Breathing. And then we'll release side one. Taking it to side two. Opposite ankle. We'll just gently Push away that inner thigh. We're not forcing. Foot is flexed here. And when you're ready, using the strength of that bottom leg to bring that in, you can immediately feel that glute stretch. And if you choose, taking that strap to just support you so you don't feel like you're working so hard in the pose, but you're getting the benefit at the same time options. Another deep breath or two. And then release down. Again, placing the strap or sash to the side. If seated in the chair. Cross right leg over left. We're going to go in to a twist. So on the floor, knees bent. We're shifting our knees or the hips a little bit to the right. Extend the left leg and fold the right knee in. If available, reaching behind that knee crease on the right leg as you draw it across the body. Right shoulder stays anchored. Achievers of the impossible are gallbladder points behind the knee here. So they're good ones to hold. Slowly unwind on your chair, come back center. You're going to cross the opposite leg over. Take that arm and go into your twist. On the floor, extend that opposite leg and draw the top leg over. 
again, keeping that shoulder anchor available, reaching behind the knee, if that's what I want. And if it, it resonates with you, breathe. And come back to center. Shift hips to neutral. If sitting in a chair, you may just draw one knee into your chest, one knee at a time. If you're on your mat, draw both knees in. Find a passive squat pose. Roll gently side to side. as you hold the knees in. Inhale through the nose. Exhale that WHO as you breathe it out. And come back down. Inhale. Lift the head. Blowing out the candle. Finding the courage to move through the fear of the unknown or the darkness. Inhale. Exhale. And then place the feet down. Arms out to a T or to that goalpost position. When you're seated in the chair, you just might let the knees fall back and forth. Same with on your backside. We're preparing for our final relaxation. Whatever that may look like for you today, can be Shavasana. But it is one of the most important periods of time that you want to spend in your yoga practice. It integrates your entire practice. The stillness after the movement, the strengthening, the static. If you find your mind wandering, just go back to the breath and let that guide you through the next few minutes. Bringing your awareness back to your fingers, wiggle your toes. No rush in getting up. Just maybe fluttering your eyelids. Take a deep breath. And 
only as you're ready. Little to one side. And then reach in your chair. Just sit upright with the backs of the hands resting on your knees. Just letting that energy that you've created in your space settle in to your hands. Your hands positive, forward moving energy. Breathe it in. And exhale it out. Give yourselves a little hug of gratitude for making it to your mat today, or your chair, or wherever you were. Thank you for joining me for this practice. Namaste. Till we meet again. Thank you all.